underway with Tyloo up against Bren. First map, just gonna double check it from my side. It will be Mirage. And we'll see if Bren can, well, I guess, kind of redeem themselves from yesterday, Mitch. They had a, a very tough time in their first game up against Mazalai. Ended up losing that, giving Mazalai their first victory overall within the tournament. And honestly, with Bren on one and three, if you could pull off a victory here, like that would be fantastic. It would really get you, you know, your first steps to potentially avoiding the bottom two and potentially getting knocked out in the group stage alone. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we were talking about Bren the other day, right? When, when they were playing versus Mazalai, saying that, and the same for Mazalai, that these guys need to beat the top teams. If they want to have a chance of moving forward, I mean, they've lost against a lot of their peers down there below, especially Mazalai, who like pretty much only have their hard games left for the most part. And it's, uh, It'll go a long way if they can take down Tyloo to actually getting them to the playoffs. The problem is that it's, it's Tyloo. As we start out the pistol run, you can see, okay, some good kills going their way at the start. Pro baits them in as Poppy Chulo trades out. Player pushes through bench, and that's a really solid pistol. So it's not just the fact that it was a, a load of scrappy pistol fights. But Poppy Chulo, uh, Pro goes out from Underwood. They tag him up. He starts falling back. Papi Chulo's there to take the angle. I didn't spot who it was, but they came through the smoke over at bench. And then they have this beautiful little crossfire to play on these guys who are focused on that one player, Underwood. But they're running into two players there. Plus, Derek, I think it is, just based on their positions. Yeah, Derek comes through that smoke. You see him here. Look. I mean, they've got a beautiful little crossfire. I love it. Well, I mean, even the two players in towards Shadow, I mean, having Pro there off to the side, I believe he got dinked down to like one HP, but then Papa Chulo just, you know, peeks around the corners and keep consistently fighting from that angle. The other person's reloading. I mean, I think there's a little bit of a gamble out of Bren, maybe a little bit of a re, but it works out well for them. And now Papa Chulo gets the first kill in this round. Tyloo with just the pistols. They have some smokes bought up. But not a bad star here for Bren. The only question I have is how long can they maintain this kind of form here up against Tyloo? I, I, I honestly don't know what I'd say if Bren like convincingly beat Tyloo in this series. Because I feel like I, I, I just, you know, I've been hurt too many times in the past. I feel like that's the, the bless syndrome, you know, always being hurt. Always getting his hopes built up and then just for it to come crumbling down. But I would say it's just one round. And this is just a pretty much save round. Oh, well, not even a save round. They did force up, but it, it looked like a save round. Hmm, Summer's got to ace it. So, realistically, this should be the end of it. He needs a little bit more damage. Already got himself the headshot. Goes for the plant. Please don't ace clutch this. I don't know if I can handle that. Molly down. Summer's pushed in the open. He should be pushed by the MP9 taken down, as happens. And the defuse easily able to come through. And they'll, they'll save over the rifles as well. well. At least two recovered, so not in the worst of spots. Uh, I mean, the main thing is that Tyler are going to be on an eco in the next round, and that's the the huge bonus that Bren get. I doubt that. Well, I mean, considering the damage they did, they could go for a force buy. The bomb plant third round loss bonus because of the initial start losing the pistol. But I think they're making the right choice, just taking some more pistols, and hopefully doing some more damage. If someone doesn't get a deagle, I don't even know. I mean, Summer could almost even go for an AK. Okay, I see those Deagle. I was going to say, I mean, they did a, like a, a pretty good amount of damage, right? Killing off three players. Maybe they want to force back up and, and keep the aggression against them. But we're going to see the full rifles coming in for Bren. Looks like they're going to head over towards the B site. Pretty quick pace as well as somebody. Going for the flash over. Maybe he's trying to fake it out for them. I, I'd imagine this is going to be pretty much a fake for him. Though, as we can see, it's going to be a commitment towards the B site. Two players here, Derek and John. And Derek's looking for some good nade damage. Actually, might connect quite a bit. Only hits, I believe, attacker. Molotov thrown in. They're gonna try to push through it. And well, John is gonna get caught looking the right way. And Derek's gonna fall as well. The B side's gonna be taken. Now, Bren is in a ton of trouble. Yeah, they've given two rifles to their opponents. They're retaking B, close range versus pistols. They invested fully into rifles in this round. You can't afford to throw them away. I and mean, the decision's being made, Jason. They're saving over these weapons. That's one hell of a fast round for Tyloo. One hell of a quick win. Pran have got to be kicking themselves, man. So, there we see the, the kind of storyline. A lot of damage done in the previous round leaves Bren to buy up full rifles. They have no SMGs even, no bonus weapons. It is full investment down to zero. 
They as soon as they lose the B site, they lose two players. Even at that point, if they manage to retake and win the round, they've already lost. The Tyloo got a bomb plant, which is a huge bonus. They did damage to players that are going to have to force up in the next round. But now those players don't even have weapons. They'll have, like, FAMAS at best. Well, then we need to see that individual step up for Bren. Maybe it's going to be Papa Chula, who's already on five kills. This is going to be a tough round. I mean, you can see Attacker just sitting on the FAMAS. Like, they're, they're not even, you know, buying up anything past... Oh, at least for the two players to slow an attack. They're not going to bother to buy up. So you have two players on 4K. So I wouldn't be surprised to see an op coming to light for them into the next round. But there you go. Dan King's going to fall pro with a good connection. That was over towards mid-window. It's a good first step to taking a round back for themselves and really disrupting Tyloo here. Attacker goes for the battle. Takes down Papa Chulo. That was... Leave over towards the A side. So it leaves A a little bit weak. And you can see Pro is still sticking around in towards middle. He's trying to play on the edge of the smoke. Maybe looking for a hole. But the A side's left open. And I think Wits is hearing maybe even the rotation through. Tyler definitely looking in towards the B side. Somebody's got a player in the window. Trap. There's one done, slowly, not ready for a second player, but there's the problem with the weaker weapons. Not going to do a whole bunch. And even despite the HP, despite Summer and Attacker being a lick away from death, they'll take the round. I'm pretty cleanly at that, four players surviving. Okay, that's only the one kill coming through. A little bit unfortunate for, for Bren there, but again, this is kind of, I, I guess, turning to more of a, a normal style, right? We're expecting Tyler to win this game. We're expecting him to win it probably 2-0. I didn't ask for predictions, but I think before the show, we kind of had our, our own thoughts on it. Not too bad of a round here, and even four live. I mean, attacker's low, summer's low. Attacker's obviously going to upgrade, so it's not too big of a deal for him. But Brandon, we're really hoping for some more economic damage, because now Slowly's on 7k, attacker's on 5. Oh no, somebody. We expect a player towards his left? I don't I don't think so. Look at this, he slows the pace down. And yeah, there's no way to expect all of these players. So he will give up the one gun, but that's all he's gonna give up is the hit onto the A site. It's completely clear. Everyone's rotating in for those kills. The bomb should be planted towards A momentarily. There's the bomb being planted. And eventually that took a while. And so, Tyler, I, I mean, I don't I don't necessarily like the strategy of blitzing it up short. <clears throat> You're not really against that much. Your players are about to execute into the A side, I think. You find the first kill, and then you just maintain the short control, back off through connector, and play the A side. This is a round where Bren don't, don't have a lot. You're not really going to get anything for killing them. You're not going to take anything away of, of significant value. Dan King is making the right call to back off, having already taken damage. Attacker is pushing forward essentially by himself, but slowly is in towards the apartments to provide, I guess, some cover and a quick headshot as well. I, I was surprised to see slowly is actually given such a huge role when it comes to the next map of train. When we saw them previously, he's playing solo towards B. He's the one that's pushing up the ramp and trying to get in people's phases. And that's, um, you know, as, as the new guy in it, it can be... A, a position that you don't get the the super important roles because that can define not only rounds but how the game goes as well but we saw him be so successful he's very smart in knowing when to go forward and, and when not to which is really really fun to watch i'm excited to see their even their ct side here on mirage i think if bram want to have a chance uh, they've got to be pulling this up to nine rounds maybe even the double digits I even go for the double op here, and I don't know if that was uh, something they wanted to run off the bat. Like, you know, a part of their game plan up against Tai Lu. But I always do get worried about teams who play double op on... Well, on maps that you're not used to seeing it as much. I know you can't obviously see it here. But then the teams who rely on double op setups, and when they fail, they, they kind of don't have a plan B sometimes and i would love to you know maybe seen some aggression maybe challenge tyloo in middle not give him that full control you have yet to see tyloo you know go for any uh window plays i feel like we haven't seen that many overall in the tournament actually you know not a lot of boosting towards window whereas 
you know, if you have, you know, Furio or 100 Thieves, they're going to do that almost every round they possibly can. And there we go. Papachula gets the first. No smokes left for Ty Lu, so these double ops could be massive, but it's whether or not they can hit their shots ideally. That's what it all comes down to at the end of the day, and somehow Dan King's able to just walk into the A site, take two kills. He's got the bomb, and uh, still going. The shot missed by Wits, and that's what we were talking about earlier, the inconsistency, the offer that you just can't rely on to hit those shots, even the easy ones. He knows he was coming out. Yeah, I feel bad, though. Like, the thing is, like, there, there was so many moments yesterday, and I, I swear it was like... The observers wanted to show us every time he unfortunately failed. Like, even <laughs> towards Palace, there was a round, right, on T's side, where there was a guy playing, like, super up close towards T-spawn. And he slowly rounds the corner and goes for the shot. He misses the shot, and they end up losing the round because of having that player there. Like, there are so many instances, and I feel bad for Wits. And again, I don't mean any, like, you know, ill will towards him. But when it comes to these, like, high-pressure shots, when someone's in your face, and you need to basically shotgun off them or kill them with the op, he doesn't seem to hit those shots. And I, I feel like he's been in so many of those situations now that it's, it's going to start to cost them not only the rounds, but potentially maps. Yeah, I think I think it already has in a lot of instances. I mean, even look versus Mazalai. They could have come ahead. They could have won. A couple more hit shots would have resulted in a map going their way. Because we were close. I mean, the game versus Mazalai was... 16-14, so 30 rounds, overtime, and then 29 rounds. So that can literally be defined by one well, player. Even overpass, they're up 15-10. And then yeah. he was the one who kept getting aggressive in towards toilets, yeah. even against pistol buys, and then he would get swarmed, he would maybe get one max, die, and give over a gun. And mm -hmm. they, they ended up losing um, a lot, like the first, like the start of the comeback was, was to pistols. And again, I mean, I, we're not trying to be negative towards in particular. It's just, you know, if you put someone like Annihilation, I feel like such a, he's more of a consistent opera in higher pressure situations. And he's definitely an explosive opera. Does that change the entire dynamic of how Bren played? Does that take him to another level? I don't know. Maybe there's more to wits. Maybe I'm just being a little bit too harsh. You know, maybe over the course of today and, and the next coming days, we'll see him start to really kind of hit the level he knows. But it's also tough to know or to try to off without teammates to support you at the same time. Like, no one flashing you in around a corner. It's very difficult. Um, what was it, Dan King we were talking about? They're kind of just like, all right, just go peek. No, it wasn't Dan King. Who was it? I'm talking about yesterday where it's just like, yeah, go peek. The no, Destroyer. There we go. Yeah, just go peek that corner and, and try to get a kill. You know, we're not going to flash for you. You just try to do something. And at some points, you know, Wits doesn't get the assists for that. But... But the whole time I've been talking, actually, we're seeing a very close round here. I did not expect this to happen, considering all they really had were pistols and, I think, an op and a rifle. But Bren bounced back. Maybe should have been more focused, focused on the round. <laughs> Caster, talk game. But this is, uh, yeah, no, it was a decent round for Bren. I didn't expect him to walk away with that one. I gotta say, I was with you in the same camp. But here we are. Four to three. Red putting up a little bit of a fight, but as I said, for them, they really have a chance. You know, when they swap to the T side, I think they're going to be blocked out. Tyler with pretty good CT sides in general. I don't think you're going to be able to isolate any of these individuals, really. Um, I do think this is one of the easier series, though, just considering the inconsistency that we've seen from Danking. It probably makes it. Uh, the, 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 let me try again. Probably mm -hmm. makes it so that there is a little bit less pressure on Wits. Uh, especially with Jad taking up that secondary op, he really didn't do great yesterday either. I was I was excited to see Jad because he had some really good starting games opening in the Oramore series, but uh, coming into yesterday, there was a map where he finished with four or five kills. I think in the um, in that last map versus Mazlai, the sixteen thirteen. As I said, in score lines like that, one player, one slightly better, slightly worse oh performance my. really defines it. I don't he know how Jad managed to lose that. He saw somebody just like kind of shoulder peek initially. He knew there was someone there. That's got to hurt. They lose the B site too, and the money's not going to be there another round here for Brent. They're just going to save. One player goes down, and that's it. Bomb has been planted. It's a problem, right? I mean, you know that's going to happen, right? That if, if you die in apartments, your team's going to save. That's the knowledge you come into this round with when you just glance at that economy. And how you're set up. 
I'm not going to hate on the angle he was holding at least because mm -hmm. I think if he holds further back, then it's they're already in the site by the time you die. At least if he gets one or two kills, he can buy time for like a rotation to come through and help him out. Yeah, I think when he sees the shoulder, he can run back and use utility or he if he's 100% confident in hitting that shot, he stays. Problem is, right, even with the AWP, if you're in that position, you haven't got anyone there to support on utility. When you fire that first shot, there's probably going to be a second player swinging around. They're going to expect an AWP to be there or be ready for it at least. And the problem is you'll probably get traded. And if you do, well, you're done. You know, the, the round is again over, but you've got one kill for it. Well, because they saved the four guns, though, they're going to keep Jaw. At least uh, he's going to drop himself over an M4, so they will lose the double up setup. Again, attackers on 10k already, slowly on 7.5. If Bren are able to take around, it's not like they're going to be able to bankrupt Tyloo until a couple more after. And they're going to get aggressive towards underpass. And I like this. I like this aggression coming through. Papa Chili is playing anti flash. Somebody's going to peek around the corner and he immediately nopes out of there. You can see Bren doing the exact same. Smoke comes through. And so, no, they're not going to expect this. There's no way they're to expect somebody to push up on this. This should be at least one kill. Right through the smoke, what? but he was ready. His brain is just too big. Papi Chulo grabs the kill. A second was found elsewhere by Pro. Got lit down to six health, but they've got a two-man advantage. They've lost the A side. Smoked out. Another one goes in towards the connector. They should be able to get over there and plant. The only issue really is Derek. They've got to deal with him. Now as the smoke start to fade, they've only got jungle. You gotta be worried about a connector push. The flash allows Derek to peek. And it doesn't get connected, but he at least got summer. That's the end of the round, pretty much. Tanking 1v5. It's just not happening. I think that failed underpass push. Under? Wow, underpass <laughs> push. It's early. Super early. Um, that's, I think, that's what caused it. I, I would have thought he would get the kill. I heard them running away. I think that was Pro who was, who was there actually picks that one up. I mean, if he gets that first one, I imagine he almost gets a second. The A-sites, you know, the pressure is going to be relieved. And Derek, I mean, how... I, I am legit confused how Summer goes for the plant and no one covers him from CT. They didn't expect someone to be there on Bren's side, but... Oh, the That's flash... A... The flash went through, right? So maybe they were, uh, they were pulled back by the flashbang. Although it didn't connect to the bomb planter. Could have connected to one of the other players. Well, I talked about not being able to bankrupt Tai Lu for a couple of rounds. It seems they might have been able to do so. Slowly's on the four. Attacker's on the three. And there's only three players left remaining. It's only a one-man advantage now for Bren. But look at that. Dan King's gotten in towards window. I talked about this before, right? We're not seeing a lot of teams in this region use that as a pivot point. But he's going to be able to sneak away out around from jungle. He's got somebody there in connector. Slowly, if he gets this kill, if Papa Chula gets this kill, he can just kind of retreat into T-spawn and buy time and hope that Pro can stay alive because they're not going to check this angle. Pro now knows they're in behind him. That's looking good for Bren, but you have to hit your shots. Pro only gets one. Papa going to fall. Now Pro, well, he gets a second kill, and that should be the round done. It should be slowly. The newcomer up to... Looking the box to close that one out he almost had the the 4k the 1v3 but unfortunately not today he, he shouldn't have ever won that 1v3 i think to be honest i'm, I'm really confused when the guy peeks some ct when his teammates smoked off towards jungle i, I would have imagined they kind of pushed them together a shot of derek though to close it out he also rescues the op more importantly for wits Again, Wits a little bit slow at the moment. Three kills. You got Papachulo on 10. On the other side. Yeah, pretty, pretty like even. I mean, Summer's on 8. Their lowest is 4 on somebody. But I think they're going into their last buyer. Actually, I can't even say last buy room because of what? They lost the last 2. They're going to be a max loss bonus very soon. And if they get a bomb plant this round, even if they lose the round, that, that should be a buy up in the round after. So, like, Bren, if, you, if you're going to win this, do it without a bomb plant. Maybe get another one under your belts after that. <clears throat> and then you're looking, you know, already seven around CT side. Like, this isn't bad mm -hmm. out of them. I, I think yesterday, if I remember correctly, 
They only had five rounds actually against Mazda now that I think about it on CT side. And yet they've already been able to match that against Tai Lu. That's an impressive uptake in performance. We look towards a fast B, execute Zhao up close, he's good for one, but how many more can he get? He needs a flash to come through, needs some support, but he's caught with a nade in his hand. As that departs, so too does he. Derek, better be pushed up close. He tries to make an angle, his teammates can support him from, gets underneath them, and Summer caught in the back, had no idea what day of the week it was. Pro on a double, but it's all for attacker now to pull off a 1v3, good headshot. But still lots more to do. The AWP on the site, and Why? he catches him as well. The peaks, one after another, offering up this situation. Attacker has an op that he can retrieve. And honestly, with the HP, that might be the better call. Problem is he has to cross out, expose himself to short where Papi Chulo currently resides. Attacker clearly suspects that as he moves to the site. I want to see if he picks up that op. Still Pop, okay, Poppy can't see the bomb, right? So he actually doesn't know if attacker could be going towards A now. Mm -hmm. But he's sticking here. He's putting all his eggs in one basket, and it seems to be paying off. Hasn't yet spotted him, but there it is. Eventually connecting it. Now, again, another close clutch, though, for Ty Lu. Considering the investment they're making, getting it down to those kind of situations is, is pretty decent. They came in with two pistols in that round. I think the only downside, really, is that this is Tai Lu, and they shouldn't be finding themselves in these positions. Um, because although they got it close in that one, the other ones were, were with full rifles. I mean, they've won the last three rounds straight. And yet, if you look at their money, it doesn't feel like it. They've had back-to-back -back rounds with only one player surviving. It didn't save the ops. They had to buy it back up. Poppy's on 3.6k. Somebody, I'm getting a little bit nervous seeing him push up an actor like this. And Poppy's going to be shit or hit from the back. Again, a situation for Tyloo where they shouldn't be winning this round. I think it will require something close to a miracle for them to come out on top here. Mm, it's just Summer's Deagle. He was good versus some of the weaker buys, but it ain't happening this time around. I mean, Brandon doing pretty decent, honestly, with 7-5 if they win one oh, yeah. more buy round. If they can win this one right here, they're already in a pretty decent position over... Like, they're, they're in a good... They have a good half. They've actually got a chance to take the map when they go to their T side. I still think they're going to struggle T side, but honestly, considering we talk about the firepower of Tyloo, that's when I match the team up and say they'll dominate their attacking uh, because they get to play as a team. You know, you got five players that are all individually better and they play on the attacking side all together. Well, you're you're in a lot of hot water, but somehow, some way, Brenner showing us some of the best Counter Strike they've played so far. I do worry though when it comes into the CT hub for Tai Lu. I mean, obviously getting to play together as a team on T side, but their individual skill and prowess, and with with Bren as we saw, you know, not like flashing each other at least properly, but also a lot of times not really getting the flashes in the right positions or using them. I feel like it's going to be hard to take a site without Tai Lu taking down you know two three people before they fall. I mean, we're already seeing in the one on four one on threes that ends up going down to the one on one very worrying sign and but you obviously can't knock Bren. More rounds already against Tyloo than they were able to get against Mazalai. But also there's there's still the uh the point that Tyloo could technically take this half still. And the money's not really there considering they're up gonna be uh be up by two. Derek's not able to peek in slow what well that's window uh, short window that's just ridiculous this is the time that we expected, and slowly, he almost won a 1v4 previously, now he's just won a whole round by himself. Things were going well for Bren for a split second, but blinking, you'll miss it as no. they lose the oh, round. Oh man, so he kills one window, kills one short, and then kills one connector. Spin. In the matter of like a second, it felt like.
Oh, we saw Witch from this from the other way around. This time he hits it though. I, do they really want to chase this though? They don't really have much money. And again, neither do Bren. Oh, don't go, don't go in there, Wits. Gotta hit the shot. Nope. All retrieved. Of course, it's Stan King to win that fight as well. And so, seven to six we go. Still a possibility for Bren to pull this off into a decent half. They can pull up to nine. Problem is, once we get out of this, take a look at their money. It really isn't going to be great. Having just started to lose rounds, they're rocking them at like 3k on most players. 3, 4k. So, really pulling out a convincing buy is going to be quite difficult. They're going to have weaker weapons. That's 100%. There's Poppy Chulo. He's the one on the drone, one of the brand players. Swift eyes for his accuracy of 31%. Again, I, I wouldn't judge accuracy based. Uh, I, I don't think it means entirely the same thing. It's percentage of shots that hit a player, but it's not always your objective. You're not always in an, in an aim duel. Obviously, you're spamming a lot of the time through smokes, through walls. So it's not if one to one. Was, if there was chickens on the map, trying to kill those, or maybe that's just me. <laughs> Somehow, I feel like the pros aren't uh, aren't quite doing that. I swear, the, the chicken hitboxes sometimes really tilt me. Dude, sometimes you shoot a chicken, you see the blood, and it's still alive. Yep. In the round. What was that? Armored chickens. Buying themselves up Kevlar and head armor. Yep. Tyler going out for some flashes in towards middle, trying to be careful of any aggression. Nice little incendiary to block off any sort of underpass aggression. It's going to be the big play. I mean, they got four players in the vicinity. Trying to peek out somebody. Peeks into underpass. He somehow gets really far out before being taken down. Helps split the uh, attention out of Wits. And now slowly, he's got Bomb. He's up towards the top of mid. They have the A site, but they need to rescue him. Poppy's going to be pushing into this one. Should be a kill coming through for him. And that's the Bomb down. <clears throat> this should be an eighth round here for Bren. That's a big shame for Tyler leaving the bomb top mid when they've got the site when they're going for the control. They're going to be splitting into this. Some are looking to move through window, attacker from behind. They should be. Oh, yeah, they should be 1v1s. Thing is, once Papi Chulo falls to attacker, if he does, immediately the swing's there for Derek. They know he's there. Yeah. Back down to 1v1 in the end, and Derek just spun around. He took the kill on Summer, was ready for the connector play. 8-6. And Brent actually doing the work. They're pulling this one all the way back. One more round, and they're set up for success in the next half. And I'm honestly, I'm impressed with what we're seeing. Where was this team versus Mazalai? Yeah, I think that's why it's sometimes so hard to... To know who else in the region is really good. I, I don't know. It, it's just like one day, you know, Bren, they're currently one and three. They they lost to Mazlai, who was zero and, and three. And now they're beating the best team in Asia in the first half. Like, how do you even gauge, who, you know, in the region? And who's mm. going to be good and who's going to be bad? Yeah, that's a good point for sure. The transitive properties, as you were saying, sadly don't quite weigh up. And in general, in Counter Strike, you know, that's the way it goes region to region. You can't just say this team beat them and they beat them, therefore, or A beat B, B beat C, therefore A will beat C. It's not how it works. But as a general rule, yeah, at least 50% of the time it's going to be accurate. Here, 0%. You, can't, you cannot assume anything. Well, you know what to say about assuming. Maybe the ninth round gonna be coming up here for Bren. The scout for Wits, unfortunately. I mean, you can see the damage being done economically coming out with Tyloo on the better buy. You get the entire A site, and this should be an 8-7. Jaw. I mean, 
the SMG. I think you heard attackers around the corner. And there you go. That will be the 8-7, but still Bren getting more rounds here than they got against Mazla in the first half. Now Tylo on the defense. It comes down to how well here Bren can play out the rest of this half and if they can somehow take these rounds and, and take this map. This is Tyler's choice, funny enough. Now, with that half behind us, I mean, we're looking at a situation that it isn't terrible. I Look, realistically, I feel like I'm sowing false hope. This should be quite clean for Tyloo. CT side should look decent, but I'm getting worried just because Bren have done so much more than I expected from them in the first place. Like, to, to see them at 8-7 at the halftime, see them winning that half on their CT side versus Tyler's attack, I, I did not expect that to go anywhere near that close. I said Bren needed 10 rounds, but that was never within the realm of possibility in my mind. But they're not that far away from it. Mm. And the, uh, the T side now will be a definitive factor. Even winning out this pistol could throw them miles in the lead. You remember the CT side will often take a force buy, then you're facing an eco afterwards. You can go 3-0 to zero up. A minute left on the clock as they make a move. Molly. It's like liquid gold in these rounds. <laughs> oh, Summer. He peeks in, gets information. Attacker, though. Oh, they're not even going to check him. He gets one. There's one that pushes the smoke. They have to know it, and he's still going to hit the shot. I... Yeah. Oh, no. It, it started so good for Brett. It felt like Derek coming back in. The slowly as he's going to be in dark, and Poppy's left alone with the bomb already out of his hands. He retreats away at the P250, but funny enough, there's going to be a player in spawn. And there you go. That's that's a pretty clean round for Ty Lue, considering the amount of ground they gave up. Now, Ty Lue's CT side should look like a well-oiled machine. So, just like Black. As it's, <laughs> uh... You know, at the end of the day, as I said, you're not really going to be able to catch these guys off guard as individuals, and then Given as a team. I love this from Attacker. He like shoots, he's like, oh wait, you're my teammate. Sorry. And then Someone's he finds the guy one. later on. He's like, oh, oh Ooh. yeah. I, I thought I saw someone else. I love somebody's little, just a little flick on like the second where he just looks at the dude. It's like target acquired. <laughs> wait, he's like, yeah, I bet I bet there's a moment of hesitation where he's like, wait, what side am I playing again? <laughs> I have a re T side. I mean, I've had that happen where I just like I forget I'm playing T side, and I see it, like a T, and I'm like, oh my god, I try to shoot him, and then I realize, you know, after I get kicked from the game, <laughs> that uh, I was on the wrong side. Jason, I'll be honest, I I could probably list um, a lot of reasons why why you never made it in a professional gaming career. I have. What? I have. I played professionally. You played professionally? Yeah. In what game? Tetris? Left 4 Dead 2. <laughs> I was on the best team in North America. I I don't know if you're meaning. Are there actually teams? No, in... I got frag videos, yeah. There's teams in Left 4 Dead? Yeah, look, I mean, there was back then. Well, how, how does that work? There's what do you mean, PvP? How does that work? Yeah, what, you, yeah, no, you do campaign. And, yeah, of course, you do versus. You ever played Left 4 Dead? I've played Left 4 Dead campaign. Yeah, I no, you play versus. versus, so you go four and four, uh -huh. there's survivors and as infected, and as infected, you try to stop the survivors from getting to the safe house. All right, okay. Yeah, super fun. Super yeah, yeah, no, sick. I've, Honestly, I've done that super against fun. my team. Yeah. And you, get a, you get, like, a tank every map, so you have to, like, try to kill this beast that you control as well, or, like, on the other team controls. Super good. Okay. I'll show you some frag videos after. Fair enough. That I didn't even know that was a thing. Fair play. Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit in Europe as well. Come on, come on, Valve. Come on, Volvo. Give us Left 4 Dead 3. <laughs> but we know they don't do three things in threes. Oh man, Half Life 3 is coming though. Alex sort of confirmed it. <laughs> no, Alex definitely confirmed it. Hey, hey, no spoilers. I haven't played oh, it. So, yeah. The, the oh, attacker. Oh, attacker. Oh, attacker. It's okay. Never mind. I thought it was gonna be way more beautiful than that. He was in such a good position. I mean, good trades back. Summer manages to take down Derek. It's now into a 3v3. Bren got that mid control, but they're giving it up. Moving towards the ramp. It's only one player. If they take down Dan King with an MP9, it should be the freest round of their lives. 
once they clear this close corner. They haven't had the control. They haven't been watching it. Danking hasn't... It's not like he's gotten good timing. He's just pushed forward into a part of the map they weren't controlling. So they should be aware of this. They should be clearing it as they move on forward. If they don't, that could be the end of the round immediately. Danking looks for the first, and he only gets damage. Quick rotate needs to come through slowly. Needs to run quite quickly, but he hasn't got mid. Brent had this earlier, so he takes his time. Clears it out. Now realizes, it's okay, no one's here. It's a little bit too late. They're already crossed over. Somebody's late to the party getting on to watch the cross. What's that? Why wits? Why would you do that? He takes a 1v1, does no damage. I and mean, now it's low HP on Ja. That man's just crazy. I was surprised to see somebody even peek that, considering it's just a two on three. There's no chance for a refry. They already knew he was there for the initial shot. Oh, somebody. This is going to hurt if Bren can't clutch us out. Pro can live up to his name and slowly we'll finish it off. It's a very close round. But a round yet again going over to Tyloo. They're going to get themselves to 10. And Bren have yet to get around here on the T side. I did hear, I'm, by the way, that half of Alex was amazing. It's unbelievable. And it shows how good VR can be. Yeah, definitely. It like it's so it's so immersive. Um, it's just spectacular. Well, unfortunately, what I've discovered is that there's an Alien Isolation VR mod, and I never made it through the whole game of Alien Isolation because it's so damn scary, like seriously oh, yeah. anxiety in inducing. But I, I now really want to play through the uh, through the VR part. Yeah, but I, he he I heard it's like it. the worst, like physically the worst VR experience of your life in terms of horror, because it just scares the SH1T out of you. That's the thing, though. I feel like it horror especially is going to be so good in the future, and even now with some games, because it, if you imagine Outlast in virtual reality, like your subconscious thinks it's actually happening. So the, the, you get so immersed in it, it's crazy. Here we go. Somebody got a big challenge. Players coming up close. There's a kill. He doesn't back off just yet, but all the players are blind, luckily. So he's not punished. The jump out to sight. One by one, they peek him. And one by one, they fall. A MAC-10 even taken up afterwards, slowly providing the covering fire. And it looks like that's the end of somebody, but still down to a four versus the... Okay. There we go. He gets two kills at least. Not bad, but the problem is the round still goes Tyloo's way. This is what I was saying before. Like, yeah, I think we both kind of expected Tyloo to do better on T side. Mm -hmm. But one advantage Tyloo has against most teams that Brennan will ever play in this region is that whenever they do push into a site, they're going to lose multiple people. Like, the, the aim individually out of these Tyloo players, like, they're going to be able to compete. And you see slowly somebody have a nice crossfire set up here. You're not going to be able to cleanly get into a site against them, at least for the most part. You're really going to have to have, you know, some fantastic utility usage to really smoke, you know, off uh, some angles. Flashes, obviously, the Molotovs on top of that. Can't peek before the smokes are down. And they lose two. They lose three. They lose four. And Derek will probably fall thereafter. And Tyler will get themselves down to, tw uh, to 12. But yeah, the, uh, if you have VR... Play Alex. Unreal. What I will say is that they, they said there were not going to be any jump scares. There were at least two. I did not appreciate them. <laughs> Especially because they were told, I was told, there will be none. Screw you, Valve. It's also, like... I don't think it's scary. Uh, I get, like... I I was scared during a lot of it, but I don't think it's supposed to be scary. Like there's some some moments where you're like in the dark and you need to use your flashlight, and that I doesn't just doesn't sit well with me, not at all. I, I remember like one of the first times I played Beat Saber on VR, and I got scared of the walls coming at me. I don't know if I could <laughs> handle a horror game coming. Oh God, VR. yeah, you'd be dead. I think That's it was good, like though. my uh, my ex. She was like playing and she like literally would like like sit down on the ground or like whole body like crunched together because she was so afraid and like I don't, I don't understand what she doesn't close her eyes it's, it's not real yeah but that that's a normal thing uh the guy the guy i was watching playing alien isolation he was, he was talking all about it he said he constantly dropped to the floor just out of fear she, paralyzed she, his body like those goats and she's like you're you're 
your brain doesn't understand that it's not real. Like when it sees some gigantic alien that it knows kills people screaming and running at it, it's just like, oh no, I'm dead. I guess you, you find out if you're a fight or flight person. Yeah, true, true. I mean, I've played I've played some FPS games where I flinch when I get shot in the head. It feels like it's actually actually coming for you. It's quite a it's quite interesting. Yeah, we're we're here twelve to eight. Bren are taking some very slow mid control. They're just chatting over it, but they're looking to move into connector eventually. Push the players out. They've taken down somebody. Lit up attacker massively as well. That's a great start to the round for Bren. The nade down won't return anywhere near enough damage. 25 seconds though. They've got to make a move, and the B side is where they look to execute into. Slowly is here. He's been having one hell of a hold alongside oh, Dan King. Go. The full HP players, 16 seconds, coming out the window, one already to sight. On his way through though, the bomb has dropped 10 seconds, they've got no time, they can't get it done. What a disaster for Bren, as slowly shut down that bomb, Dan King takes one from afar. Oh, they did everything right in the mid control, they found the picks, they did the damage, and then they just ran that clock down even further. That's a shame. They needed to push way quicker than that. I mean, they, they look so good. They did early damage. They got an early kill. Attacker had no HP. They also shown that when it comes to hitting that B site slowly in summer are just this beast playing off each other so well. Dan King rotates in and he's able to get kills as well. Still, this half has been flawless for Tai Lu and now Bren. I mean, they got, they got money to spend. They can buy up, but can they get the kills? Can they get the rounds? A site seems to be their their best bet here, unless they're gonna get some set smokes put over on the B site. Look at that, Dan King, six direct duels won, wits zero. That's that's very unfortunate at the moment. I mean, his ADR is not that far behind, but to be able to, I mean, we saw Dan King like over towards B hall or uh, to B, yeah, to apartments when we saw Bren on T side. He wins the 1v1 battle against Wits. Just peeks into the corner. Looks like they will head towards A. He had a Mac 10 and Galil to pair up with their AKs. And there's only going to be one defender here. And it will be Summer sitting back towards CT spawn. But the two players towards Connector are really putting that pressure and that presence on a Tai Lu in towards middle. And oh, Dan King, he spotted out one. Smokes come in. Again, they're peeking before they bloom. They're actually even smoking him off. I'm not sure what's going on here. But they will start to win the trades. They're pulling ahead. Bren need to be careful of Attacker, who's just up above on the stairs, able to pick off one, looks for the Bomb Planner, gets him as well. Up close to Connector, at least the trade should be possible as the smoke fades, Pro's undetected. Gets one, now they know he's here though. Swinging back out, it's gonna be difficult. Attacker in position, watching for him. Good nade lands on him, and Attacker with a third, looking for even more, but Derek shuts him down. Now on 37 health though, the AWP more than enough to finish him off. 14 for Ty Lu, even despite a good start in that round. For Bren, that was just all about attacker on the 3k. 11k money for Summer, and I, yeah, attacker on 24 kills. Like, this is this is insane. This is ridiculous. They Wait, they didn't even have smokes for CT. They smoked off Connector. That was it. Stairs didn't get smoked. Jungle didn't get smoked. I mean, forget the AKs. Go to Galil's then. Get those smokes down. Get that post plant. I mean, maybe they're not you know, fully confident in their post plant holds, but... You can't just walk into a site against Tai Lu. It's not going to work. Double Ops coming through for Tai Lu. Still somebody in Dan King. We got the AKs. Yet again, attacker's going to fall. They know they like to get aggressive, so... Get presence of mind out of Bren to continually Molotov and, and shoot in that direction. It's not the first round attacker gets dropped low. Slowly. I, I just feel like this is gonna go so bad for Bren for some reason. The position he's holding. Okay, never mind. I jinxed it. <laughs> Bomb's still back towards the top of mid. They have a two man advantage. This surely should not be around. Bren loses. With the rifle round, slowly an attacker have been the ones that have pulled out the massive individual plays. So I feel like this should be Bren locking it down without those guys to come through and just absolutely tear it apart. You're relying on the double op setup. It's gonna be easy enough to force them into saving. Once they don't find too many opening kills, and already the shot and miss there on top of the boxes by Dan King. Luckily, Brand's ticket isn't being cashed in just yet, but they run one at a time into summer. What's going on? They just keep doing this. 
giving every opportunity away. Look, one by one they go, Jason. Can we please peek together, Bren? What are you doing? You had a 5v3. Why? Why? Slow peeking the AWP here. Usually that only ends one way, but luckily pulled off the angle, so at least it will get a bomb plant. Oh, Jason, I'm actually, I'm losing my mind. Bren have thrown this round away completely. It looks like they're determined to just not win around on the T side. At least one shot there for Pro. A 1v2 now. It's workable. It's doable. Another shot. And the pistol finishes him off. So close. You believe. So close. There was I a did. moment. I could hear it. I'm starting to have faith in Pro. But that's a round they never should have lost. I mean, what is that? One player to go to B, one up connector, then another one up slowly, then one comes ramp. Like, what, what are we doing? Like, even look at the commitment there on the A site. Three players came up con. They got flashed. One continued to, to CT, one went jungle, one went back and went up short. It was like, as soon as they got, it's like in a movie, and then someone charges, and as soon as something happens, they just run away. Like, everybody just goes to chaos, run in different directions. Do different things. This is definitely not a well drilled machine. Oh, this could be it here. They're not checking underpass. Attacker pushes up. He's gonna pop the first, gets the kill. Pro is gonna turn around and doesn't hit the shots up against attacker. And then, I, do they need anyone else except attacker here? Three <laughs> kills. The man lives up to his name. I'll give him that. What if he, what, what if there's an attacker and a defenser on a team? A defenser? I don't know. Not not a defender. It's early. A defenser. <laughs> pretty sure you call them defenders. Oh no. I'm pretty sure we call this a map victory for Tai Lu. Wits 1v4. Nade directly on him. Molotov as well. He pushes out. Oh, Wits. Not again. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Flashbacks. PTSD. And he's still not going to have a chance here as he peeks in towards. Okay, he gets Dan King. I was going to say that should have been an angle held. He still has three players to find. He luckily has the bomb, but all three players are right around him. He has a 1v1 up against Summer. Spots him out. There's a player towards short. Peek with the flashbang. Gets the first and the oh. second. Wits. Maybe I called it too early now. Up against slowly in the one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to have time to plant. But he only has 8 HP here. One bullet out of slowly will finish this off. Oh, don't cross. Don't cross. Oh, my. Oh. So at least now he knows where Wits is, right? He knows he's on the left side. It could be Sandwich, Underwood, Palace, or Ramp. He's got to clear out those angles. Or Tetris. Got to clear out those angles. It's going to cost him a little bit of time. 20 seconds on the clock. He's got 15 to get on and start diffusing. Looks like instead of clearing them, he's going to just tap it. He's going to bait that player into the open. Nope, he's not going to tap it. Instead, he clears the corner. Now he's got no time. Wits has won this. Wits, 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 he won it. Oh. There's no time, oh, right? No, no time. Jesus. Yeah, there's no way Wits knew he had that. That was like 0.3 of a second. So as to why he peeks out without hearing the defuse being tapped, I will never understand. That is a another great attempt by Brand to throw around. See, this is but what, also a fantastic clutch. Yeah, so this is what kills me about Wits. Like we said before, right? Like he can be like insane. He has those moments. He stands out and pulls off plays like this. It's nuts. But I would love to see the consistency for it time and time again like that could take Brendan to another level and that unfortunately is only their first round on the T half like if they were stood on the bomb if that player was stood on the bomb he would have got the defuse on time that, that's the crazy thing it was like entirely down to position entirely down to look that that actually paid off no not paid off but it that they won the round and for wits it was a big risk with no reward Molly, they're going through it. Not too much damage taken. Good opening duel. Bren getting control over the A side. Only the off left. Summer gets one. Into connector he goes in through the smoke. No, he actually faded out further. And Dan King was able to take down Wits in the meantime. But it looks like the whole side of the CTs is falling. Question mark. Papa Chulo is 11 health. This could go their way. This desperately could. As Poppy's left all by himself. He's got to pull off a 1v2, Jason. This could be it. This could be the end of Bren. And indeed it is. 16 to 9. Tyloo take that map and a pretty convincing CT side as we expected. Yeah, they lose only one round. Not bad at all here for Tyloo to really show. After that, 